The corner pin and CC power pin effects can be found under the distort category, and they both do very similar things, but CC power pin has a few more controls. If I scroll down to find corner pin and apply that to an image of a corgi right here, it just gives us four controls. Upper left, upper right, lower left, lower right. And we can visually see these points in the comp window right here. All this allows you to do is stretch and distort your image based on the four corners of whatever you're applying it to. Now, this is a little bit different on text layers and shape layers because if I apply it to this, you see the corner points go straight to the corners of the comp. This is just because of the way that After Effects renders vector artwork, which text and shape layers are. So if you need to get these corner points attached to the text, you need to pre-compose it first. So I'm gonna delete the corner pin, pre-compose this by going to layer and down at the bottom, pre-compose, and I'll call this text. Click OK, but that's not enough. You see that my bounding box for the layer is still the size of my comp. So I'm gonna double click into that, and I wanna just quickly crop it to this text by using this little button right here, the region of interest. Click on that, draw a box, just like the crop tool in any other program, go up to composition, crop comp to region of interest. That will crop it to that selection. I can close out of that and now I have my comp with the bounding box much closer to the text. Apply that corner pin again and now I can distort my text the way that I'd expect it to. One really great use of this effect is in motion tracking. So here I have a video clip of me on a laptop. If I wanted to replace what was on this screen, I would track it. If I go into my tracker panel right here, I've actually already set up a track with four corner points of this screen. I'm gonna apply it to this screen mat layer, which is just a grid, but I'll edit my target so that the layer is going to my screen mat, click OK, and then just click Apply. As you can see, I have a whole ton of keyframes now for every frame of my video, but After Effects has actually created a corner pin effect with all of those keyframes applied. And you see those dots right here. They're now locked onto my laptop screen. And if I scrub through, it's tracked on. Now, because I made this a pre-comp, I can go into that pre-comp and I can change this to whatever I want. I could put that picture of the Corgi on there. And now it looks like I'm just looking at this super cute picture of a Corgi. Now the CC power pin effect is very similar. If I press Control Shift E with those layers selected, it'll delete all of the effects. I'm gonna close out my tracker and find CC power pin right here and apply that to the photo. Again, I get these four points, top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. But I also have perspective, unstretch, and expansion with some more controls. So just like before, if I click and drag on any of these corners, I can distort my image but you'll notice that I'm getting these yellow guides shooting off of the corners of my image. What's great about this in the composition is that I can click and drag on any one of these guides and it'll adjust the two corners that are connected by that line based on the distortion I already have. So that's just a really handy feature and probably a useful enough feature that I would say always use CC power pin. There's no advantage to using the corner pin effect over CC power pin. These guides alone are reason enough to just use this effect. But on top of that, we also have this perspective control. So let me just really distort this out. And I'll show you, if I turn that perspective all the way down, it's eliminating that distortion of the image basically going off into a vanishing point. This is almost like a lens focal length control. That's kind of how you can think about it. If you take the perspective all the way off, then it's just gonna be a very straight distortion. But with the perspective on, it kind of distorts down into that vanishing point, wherever you're distorting it to. Just like the normal corner pin effect, CC power pin will not work on vector graphics. So if I copy and paste this back into here and bring it down, add the CC power pin effect, it's gonna go to those outside corners again. So you're gonna wanna apply it to a pre-composed version of the text if you need that. One other little thing about this effect, right up here in the top left corner of my composition is a little crosshair. If I click on that, it's basically gonna give me center marks so I can always keep track of how far off center that perspective shift is shifting the contents of my layer based on the anchor point of the actual layer prior to that effect. So it's just another little useful guide. Now when I originally uploaded this video, I got a great comment from Constantine Meyer, sorry if I pronounced that wrong, about how you can make vector layers work with CC Power Pin without having to pre-compose. So let me grab that text layer one more time and bring it back out into my main comp and I'll just shut off the pre-comped version. Add the Power Pin effect and just disable the visibility for a second so we don't see the distortion as I move these points to the corners of the text. I'm not gonna be ultra precise right now, but just to show you what's happening, 
Uh, I'm just lining those corner pins to the corners of my actual text layer. And then I'll turn it back on, and obviously that isn't what we wanted to do. But if I click this checkbox right here, unstretch, which we're gonna take a closer look at in a little bit, uh, it basically sizes my text to the comp. Obviously not what I want, but if I now duplicate this and uncheck unstretch, our text is right back where it was before. It's still a text layer, not a pre-comp, and I can use this second instance to now adjust the text however I want with no pre-composing necessary. Now, as soon as you move the layer around, you're going to break the effect. So you're limited to where that text layer actually is, but to get around that, you could just add a transform effect rather than using the transform controls and reposition it that way. So that's a fun little workaround, thanks for the comment. But what about this unstretched checkbox? Well, if I go back into my track and we transfer these keyframes from the corner pin effect to CC power pin, which I'll do really quickly, I'm just gonna add CC power pin. I'm gonna double click on top left for CC power pin. That'll expand this out down in my timeline. And I'll also open up the corner pin effect. Then one at a time, I'm going to copy and paste these keyframes. So upper left, control C. In CC power pin, that's the top left, I'll paste. Upper right, copy, paste. Lower left, copy, paste. Lower right, copy, paste. Then I can turn off the original corner pin effect, collapse my layer up, and the track looks exactly the same. It's just being driven by this power pin effect rather than corner pin. What this allows me to do is now change that perspective shift, but also unstretch my image. Now, why would you ever want to do that? Well, on this particular example, this layer at least, we wouldn't. So I'm gonna uncheck that and we're just gonna turn this off for a second. Now, I'll be honest, I did not know what this unstretch feature was for when I originally posted this video, but thanks to Lutz Gottschalk, I hope I pronounced that right, for an excellent explanation as to what exactly is happening here and I'm gonna show you right now. The purpose of unstretching something is basically so that you can isolate a part of tracked footage, treat it like a still layer that isn't moving at all, and then re-stretch it back into position. So first I'll give myself a little bit more room here and we're gonna apply the power pin effect to the actual tracked footage. And I'm just gonna disable the visibility for a second so that I can just freely adjust these guides without it actually distorting my footage. Then I'll twirl this open and we have a motion trackers menu because I've tracked this footage. If I twirl that open, we've got tracker one with four track points and that automatically opened up the footage viewer. We can see point one is top left, point two is top right and so on. So top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. And each one of these has a whole bunch of keyframes inside. The one that I want is this one right here, attach point. This is the position property of that track point throughout the entire duration of this clip. So I'm just gonna press U to bring up all of the keyframes and then I'll just click and control click on each one of these attach points and double tap the S key. So SS and that solos my selected properties. But I also wanna bring up the power pin effect. So again, I'll give myself more room and with that layer selected, I'll hold down shift and press E to bring up the effects and CC power pin is the only effect, but now I can twirl that down. Now I wanna transfer all of these keyframes over just like from the corner pin effect to the power pin effect. So first point is top left, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. So now all of my tracker points have been converted into the CC power pin position controls. And again, this is disabled from the visibility so we don't see it. I'm just gonna press E to collapse my layer and E one more time, and then I'll turn that effect back on. Now obviously this is not doing what I want, it's bringing the four corners of that footage down to those four points, but if I unstretch this footage, suddenly my comp is filled with what was on that laptop screen. And because it's tracked, it's going to keep that screen in place or in view of that comp, basically as if we stabilized the footage and cropped it, corrected the perspective, and now I have that screen as a comp that I can manipulate however I want. So this might be a weird example, but let's just bring up the Venetian blinds effect and say that I was trying to put some scan lines on that screen. That would be really hard to do on top of tracked footage and the Venetian blinds effect isn't taking that track into account. So if I set this to 50 and I changed it to say 90 degrees, those scan lines, I don't really have an easy way of getting them on that screen and tracking it well. But if I unstretch the footage first, then apply the Venetian blinds, and this is creating alpha in the layer, transparent pixels, so I'm going to add a solid 
composite effect after it, which will give me that color behind it, and we'll just make it kind of a mid-tone blue-gray color. And then I'm going to duplicate my CC Power Pin Effect, Control D, and drag it to the bottom of the effect stack, and uncheck Unstretch. And I'm left with just that screen, but those effects applied and matching the perspective of the original shot footage. From here, I can adjust my effects however I want, and it's almost like I'm working within a pre-comp, except I'm working in the regular comp. So to get the rest of my footage back, all I need to do is add a CC composite effect. So composite, CC composite at the end of the effect stack, uncheck RGB only, and composite the original behind. And just like that, my footage is back, but I have these effects living on top of that tracked screen footage. And like I said, I can adjust this however I want now. So I could change the width to make those scan lines smaller. I could add a glow effect maybe after the solid composite, and play around with those settings, but it's all going to respect the perspective and distortion and tracking of that footage. So that's how you use the unstretch feature. I'm going to disable all of those effects, so I'm just going to click on that button right there, turn my screen mat back on, and we have one last section of CC Power Pin, which is the expansion. And this basically just lets you shift the edges of this comp around freely, so the top edge, left, right, bottom. So you could use that feature to correct the aspect ratio difference between your comp and the screen. Uh, it looks like it is squishing it down a little bit, so maybe I would just stretch it up a bit, and this way I don't have to mess with my tracking points at all. But then I would need to go into that pre-comp and then adjust my mask so that it's you know not going above the top of that monitor right there. So that's a little bit of push and pull, give and take, to get that to look the way that you want it. But the expansion allows you to easily adjust that aspect ratio shift. But that's everything for Corner Pin and CC Power Pin. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.